Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video on how to make a double sided coin. Uh, there's lots of videos out there on how to do this um, very quickly and cheap. You can go to Harbor Freight, get a hole punch, a mallet, order yourself up a mandrel, and yeah, you can make a coin ring. Um, this is going to be a little bit for the more advanced. Uh, we'll do a quarter today, and then I'll do another video later on showing you how to do half dollars and then even Morgan dollars and get them to turn out really nice. I'll include a picture of one that I've recently made right now. When you want to get a little bit more advanced into it, you're going to get a digital caliper so that you can get your measurements as close as possible. You're going to measure the very tip of your mandrel so that you know exactly how big you want to cut out the center of your coin so that it just barely fits on top of the mandrel. So once you do that, you can write that down. Measure your coin that you're going to be doing. We're going to be using quarters for this one because there's more tips and tricks to use with the half dollars and especially the Morgan dollars because there's so much more meat on the coin. So for this, you measure it with your digital caliper, divide it in half, and you found the exact center of your coin. And then you can take a punch or whatever you want to do. You can scribe it a little bit so you find the center. And then with the measurement of the tip of your mandrel, divide it in half, reduce this, lock it into place, stick the tip into the dead center of the coin, and then you can scribe around it. Now when you're right before you scribe around it, what you're going to do is you're going to take a black magic marker and you're going to blacken out the whole entire coin. And that proves for a very important process later on. But once it's blacked out and you scribe all the way around it, you have a nice silver line to follow for when you're cutting it out or drilling out your center. You stay within the lines, very elementary. Um, I'm gonna blacken and cut my coin and we'll go from there. All right, so now, as you can see, there was my center and then uh, I scribed a perfect circle, which is the exact size of the tip of my mandrel. So when I cut with my jewelry saw or I drill it out and then file my way to the edge, I know exactly where the dead center is, which in the end process will turn out a much more high quality ring. So I'll cut it out and we'll jump from there. All right, if you use a jewelry saw like I did, this is what your end product should look like, where you cut on the inside of the mark that we made so that you can true it up later with some needle files. And then we've got this extra plug left over that we can keep and, I don't know, melt down later after we've made 12, 15 of these rings. The reason that we painted it black or marked it black with the black Sharpie is because when you anneal your coin to soften the metal, a lot of people will have you do it in the dark and you're looking for the dull red color. Well, one of the secrets is that when you're heating up the coin that's been painted black by the Sharpie and you start to see the Sharpie color dissolve, take the flame away and if you turn off the lights you'll see that it's a dull red. So this way you can anneal your coin in the daylight and never scorch your coin so hot that you get jeweler's bane or copper bane or whatever it's called and ruin the end result of your coin. So that's a tip you ain't gonna find anywhere else. All right. So where I'm at right now, you can see that it just barely fits on the tip. As a matter of fact, I gotta file it just a little bit more so it gets more seated, so that when I start banging around the edges of it to fold it down, it's not gonna pop off. You're gonna see in a lot of other people's videos where when they use the, uh, the punch, it takes out a, a lot more of the coin than you need to, and then it sits somewhere right around here, and then they can just fold it in half really quickly. Again, the more time that you take, the more meat that you leave on the coin, it ends up having a much better finished result. Patience is everything. Uh, keep trying to set it on top of your mandrel so you can see the high points and where you need to file a little bit more. I did this with a round needle file. Um, once we do finally get it seated, we're going to mark the whole thing black with the Sharpie coin, anneal it, wait till the Sharpie starts to dissolve, We'll know that we've reached it, and then we'll quench it in some water and start folding it. All right, I have no idea how 
good this is going to turn out, but it is like negative six degrees outside, so I'm not going outside. I got a flame retardant cloth behind this, so it's not going to be a big deal. You're going to watch for the Sharpie marker to start to dissipate, and it shouldn't take too long. That's it. And because the uh, it's just a quarter and it's so thin, it heats up, Sharpie dissipates, and when you get with the Morgan Dollar, um, of course it's going to take a lot much, a lot much, a lot longer. All right, here's another tip that absolutely nobody would share with me. After about six months of trial of error and a bunch of other things, I finally figured out how to get a quarter down to like a size five. Um, if you were to take your coin, which we're working with a quarter today, put it right on the mandrel and start tapping around the edge until it folds down and it's sliding down the coin, you're gonna end up with like a size 10 uh, ring, which is fine. But what if you want to make a child or a ring for one of your kids, your wife, with smaller fingers, whatever? It all begins with a doming block and then a dapping set. So what you're going to do is you'll take a piece of leather because this is steel. And you don't want to mar your coin. Take a piece of leather, put it in there, put the coin in, put another piece of leather on top of it, take your dapper, set it in there, pound it around. And what it'll do is it will bowl your coin. And so because when you set it on the tip of your mandrel and it's already bent in half, you've already got a much better starting point for bending your ring and folding it in half. So then, like I said, you can go from what would be a size 10 men's ring all the way down to a size 5. Um, I'll get this ring domed and then show you what it looks like and what we'll be working with. All right, so we got it domed out a little bit just by using the doming block and the dapping set. I mean, look at the angle on it. There's no way you could get that angle in that short of a time on the mandrel. And if you decide that you're gonna use a, uh, the doming block and the dapping set, when you go to make your initial cut, because you can see how far it went down on the tip, you can plan for that. Make your hole a little bit smaller to begin with, knowing that when you dome it with this method, your hole's gonna expand a little bit, and then you could actually start out with this angle at the very, very tip. You know, it pays to plan ahead, measure, 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 measure. I can't stress it enough. So the next thing that we're gonna do, which, you know, more stuff that nobody ever shared with me, is get yourself um, a pine board like a 2x4 I'm gonna use a 2x8 whatever and so once you get it to this angle once it's laying over more than it's standing up you're gonna set the edge down on your board and then you're gonna take your nylon hammer rubber hammer uh, leather mallet whatever you're using and you're gonna pound at an angle so that when it's laying on the on the wood it's not marring but you're you're folding it from both angles and you'll get this thing to fold down almost immediately, especially with how thin it is. Again, half dollars in Morgans, you're working with a lot more meat, and it's gonna take a lot longer. Um, we'll edit this part. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. When you put the coin in your doming block, the part of the coin that you want to be on the outside of the ring has to be facing down. So, all right. Let's go over and finish folding this ring. All right, I know that the lighting isn't the best, but you're gonna get the gist of what we're doing here. I have had a lot more luck with a high density teardrop nylon hammer than I have had with this rubber slash nylon mallet. It absolutely worked, made plenty of rings with it. However, like I said, a lot more success with this one. Remember to keep turning it while you're hitting it. I don't know if you can 
really see the angle, but it doesn't take long to get that thing to start really folding over. And once we get to this point, we can flip it over like this and finish folding it. Alright, another thing is before we finish folding it, sorry I know I jump around a little bit, is about every size, when you're, when you're still folding it over, maybe even a two sizes, no more than that, you want to re-anneal it. Once you get the coin completely folded over and looking flat, and then you need to resize it, expand it, once you get the whole thing folded over flat, you have to re-anneal it every half size so you don't split the coin. I'll include a uh, picture right now of a coin that I split because I tried to rush a process and failed miserably. Here's that picture. All right, so I'm gonna go and kneel a coin and we'll finish holding it. All right, so right now we're sitting right at a size five, but I've still got, you can't see that the lighting's horrible. I've still got a little bit to close it off. So we'll probably end up with about a five and a half, maybe five and three quarters when it's completely finished. So what I'm gonna to do to finish it off and really close the ends in is I've got myself a hard piece of plastic. You can do this with a uh, nice thick plastic cutting board. This is just what I'm using. And so, lay it right on there. Take the pointy end, my high density thing, and we'll close the ends in as we go around and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so another one of the things that you can do is when you're looking at your coin ring, I know the lighting's horrible, but you've got the tiniest little high point. Just hold your mandrel like this, bang it a couple times, and it'll close right in for you. I will uh, work on this for another minute or so, and uh, we'll see what we end up with. All right, here it is, 1908 Barber coin ring. We ended up being at a size uh, six and a half, I think. Um, uh, if you want to make a smaller ring, you can put a brake on it. Just take a hose clamp and, you know, when you're about two sizes away from where you want to be, put it on the mandrel and the coin will slide up against it. You can finish banging it out a little bit and it'll close in faster than it will slide down the mandrel and that helps keep your sizes down as well. Some people want to complain about how it has a cone shape thicker on one end and thinner on the other. But that's exactly what it is. Where you punch the hole out, the silver spread became thinner, where the back of the coin kept its original gauge, and so it's gonna have a little bit of a cone shape. That's just one of the characters of having a cone ring. There is a possibility, or there is a way, on how to close the end in, and I'll get on that with my next video for the halves and the full Morgan Dollar coins and how to make some real quality coins. I'm gonna get this shined up, show you a couple more images. Thank you for listening to all of my run-ons and my poor lighting. I appreciate it. All right, well, I used some jeweler's polish and I got it pretty clean. Hopefully that focuses. I'll include a uh, little outro clip of what it looks like, but not too bad. A little bit of investment, a little bit of time, and you can make a high quality coin ring. Thanks again for checking it out, guys. We'll see you later.